Hi, I'm Dr. Steve Orr and I teach instrumental music education at Wichita State University. I've always been interested in finding the best ways to practice. So interested in fact that I've done a lot of research into the subject. I've created this series of short videos with the goal of helping you to learn how to practice more effectively. Over the next four short videos, I'd like to talk with you about these aspects of practice. What makes effective practice? How we learn new skills? Creating effective practice strategies based on those learnings? And finally, assessing yourself for improvement. Before we talk about what you should do in your practice, you must first understand that there are two key things researchers have found. First is that there's a big difference between practicing a skill and playing at the skill. By that, I mean that they found that effective practicers, those guys who leave the practice room playing better than they did when they began their practice session, they do certain things. These are the things we'll discuss in this series of videos. Second, we also know that deliberate practice requires a lot of mental effort. It's tiring. Therefore, you can't expect to have more than 15 to 30 minutes of focused practice at a time. So they learn to take breaks to refresh their brains and muscles and then practice multiple times in a day, every day. They've learned that you can't develop physical skills by cramming like you would if you're cramming for a test. So practically speaking, we found that effective practice set a schedule knowing that short daily sessions are more effective than long irregular ones. They know that the more time that passes between practice sessions, the more time their muscles will forget what they've learned. We've also found that the practice environment is important. Since practice requires a lot of focus, you don't want anything to distract you. And finally, we've learned that most all expert musicians have a practice routine. They have a warm-up routine aimed at reminding their muscles what it feels like to play with a good tone, with good articulation, with good finger facility. They also understand the 80-20 rule. This is the idea that if you spend 20% of your practice aimed at developing your fundamental skills, that will grow your ability to play more challenging music. And then the other 80% of your practice time is spent working on the current pieces and other things just for the fun of it. One of the most important things you can do to improve your practice is to learn to set effective goals. This isn't just for practice. All successful people have learned to set goals in whatever area they've been interested in. I've also learned that your practice goal needs to be aimed at improvement. It can't be just aimed at putting the time in because time doesn't necessarily mean you'll get any better. I did a research study once where the students said that that was their goal is to put in the time. And I videotaped them three times. And at the end of those three sessions, they weren't any better than they were at the beginning. The ones who had the goal of putting in time for improvement are the ones who succeed. Once you learn to set goals, you should sit down and write three types of goals for yourself. First, write long-term goals, something that'll take a long period of time, whether it be a year or many years. For example, if you're in middle school, you may set a long-term goal of making it into the all-state band. Next, write some medium-term goals that you can achieve in a week or a few weeks or in a month. Learning to play a certain number of scales by memory or earning one at the state solo festival, those are great medium-term goals. You need to review these goals on a regular basis. And then every practice session, you should set short-term goals that are aimed at that day. You'll set them before you practice, and then you may adjust those goals during the practice. The more clear you are in your mind about your goal, the more you're going to accomplish. So, <clears throat> how do you set goals? Well, one popular way of remembering what goals um, goes into effective goal setting is through the SMART goals acronym. It is your goal specific. In other words, is it clear enough that if someone else heard the goal that they would be able to clearly see it in their mind? Is it measurable? How would you know when the goal has been met? For example, 
If I simply say I want to know my scales, I wouldn't be able to know when I've reached that goal. I know my scales. How do I know I've met it? But if I say that I want to be able to play all 12 major scales in 16th notes at 70 beats a minute, anyone would be able to tell when that goal has been met and when it's not been met. Next, is it action-oriented? Do I know what I'm going to need to do in order to meet that goal? Is it reasonable? If you can barely play hot cross buns, then maybe those 12 major scales are not the goal for you. Well, at least in short or medium term. But it would be okay for that goal to be a long-term goal. And finally, is it timely? Do you know when you want to meet that goal? Because due dates are often great motivators. Once you've set a goal, you need to understand that you're going to need to take a number of steps to get there. Um, in reality, each one of those steps is its own little goal. Each long-term goal is arrived at by meeting a number of medium term goals. And each medium term goal needs a number of short term goals in order to be met. Even your short term daily goals, they require you to reach little baby goals that um, build toward your target. For example, if I set a medium term goal to play a two octave chromatic scale, I'm going to have to take a number of steps to get that to get there. First, I need to know the fingerings for the first octave. Then I'll need to play it at a slow tempo and gradually set a faster and faster goals. Then I'm going to need to do the same type of short term goals for the second octave. Eventually, I'll hit that medium term goal. If my goal is to get a one in my solo at festival, I need to know what challenges lie within that piece. That means I need to analyze the piece. Then I need to set little goals of learning a few measures at a time until I finally got the piece well under my fingers and into my head. So let's review. If you're going to be effective in your home practice, you need to know a few basic things. First, know how that practice is like being your own first, know how the practice is like being your own teacher, and it requires you to do what teachers do. You need to set your own goals, you need to be self-aware as you play. You need to choose effective strategies. You need to self-assess and act upon your own motivation. Next, you need to know that practice takes effort. Don't be surprised if you can only practice for short periods of focused time. But know that sh multiple short periods of practice with short periods of rest is more effective than long sessions and long periods of rest and forgetting. Third, you need a routine. That means you practice in a place with few distractions. You have a set warm-up procedure. You have specific fundamental building activities. And you set time for learning new things. Fourth, smart practicers set smart goals. And finally, you need to break those big goals down into smaller goals in order to meet them. If you do these things, you're going to do what my dad used to say, practice smarter, not harder. We'll see you next time.